Our scripture today is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. Now the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under Eli. The Lord's word was rare at that time, and visions weren't widely known. One day Eli, whose eyes had grown so weak he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp hadn't gone out yet. And Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple, where God's chest was. The Lord called to Samuel, I'm here. He said, Samuel hurried to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go lie down. So he did. Again, the Lord called Samuel. So Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, I'm here. You called me? I didn't call, my son, Eli replied. Go and lie down. Now Samuel didn't know the Lord yet, and the Lord's word hadn't yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel. He got up, went to Eli, and said, I'm here. You called me? Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, go and lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down where he'd been. Then the Lord came and stood there calling just as before. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel said, speak, your Lord, your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of all who hear tingle. On that day, I will bring to pass against Eli everything I said about his household, every last bit of it. I told him that I would punish his family forever because of the wrongdoing he knew about. How his, how his sons were cursing God, but he wouldn't stop them. Because of that, I swore about Eli's household that his family's wrongdoing will never be reconciled by sacrifice or by offering. Samuel lay there until morning and then opened the doors of the Lord's house. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel, saying, Samuel, my son, I'm here, Samuel said. What did he say to you? Eli asked, don't hide anything from me. May God deal harshly with you, and worse still, if you hide from me a single word from everything he said to you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. He is the Lord. Eli said, he will do as he pleases. So Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not allowing any words to fall. All Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was trustworthy as a Lord's prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We, uh, I just said earlier in the prayer, uh, George Nemi and his daughter's here with him today, and George is going on the honor flight on Tuesday, and so we just want to, again, George, thank you for your service, and uh, we're excited for you, and I, I told him, I said, hey, man, that's going to be one long day, you know, they fly out to D.C., and they fly back in the same day, and George said, well, probably a lot of sleeping on the way home. So, uh, uh, but uh, we just celebrate that with you, George. So, blessings. So, uh, let us pray. God, we are grateful um, that you speak to us. And, of course, we know there are times that we wander and, and go our own way. 
Uh, we get so busy in life. Uh, we miss hearing your call. But today, as your uh, servant, uh, Samuel, uh, teaches us, uh, open ourselves, uh, that we may learn from his uh, call a way that you could speak to each of us. So be with us in these moments, for we ask this in uh, Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Bruce uh, Pandolfini is a chess master. He's a master chess player, uh, but he also has written a series of books to help persons become interested in playing chess. And so he's written books about, uh, you know, how to be a beginner chess player. And uh, in fact, he has a, a, a phrase that he used, uh, move in silence only speak when it's time to say checkmate. Uh, that's one of those uh, phrases. And he says about teaching a person's chess, uh, he says, uh, my lessons consist of a lot of silence. I listen to many other teachers and they do a lot of talking. I let my students think. If I ask a question and I don't get the right answer, I will rephrase the question and wait. I will never give the answer. Most of us don't really appreciate the power of silence. Some of the most effective communication between students and teachers, between master chess players and new beginning players, takes place during the periods of silence. We are uh, in a sermon series uh, entitled uh, Burning Bush 2.0. Uh, we have these call stories in the Bible, and uh, we're hopefully opening ourselves up to saying, well, you know, what is God calling me to? And, and it's not just for the young, it's for each one of us as followers and disciples of Christ to say, what is, what is God's call in my life? And so we looked at Moses, and, uh, you know, we remember, if you remember, we kind of talked about he had kind of an identity crisis because he was born a Hebrew, grew up Egyptian, finds out he is a Hebrew, uh, wanders in the wilderness, uh, but God calls him home, back into a relationship with the God of his ancestors, and then tells him that he needs to go and uh, deliver the people of Israel from Egypt. And of course, if you remember, he had a whole series of excuses, um, but eventually uh, he was sent as God's messenger to deliver the people of Israel from Egypt. Last week, we uh, followed this, the call story of Abraham. Uh, Abram and his family uh, were called to just leave their family, uh, go to a land that God had promised them. It was a, if you remember the map, it was a long journey because they couldn't cut right straight across. They went to the land of Canaan. Uh, and all the way along, uh, wasn't sure if God was going to fulfill the promise to make him a great nation. And yet, as he looked back on his life, uh, he saw all these places where God had intervened and God's blessings was in his life. Ultimately, he reminded himself of God's call as one of obedience and trust. Today, we're looking at the call story of Samuel. And uh, Samuel is one of the great prophets of the people of Israel. In fact, there are two uh, books in the Old Testament, First and Second Samuel, that uh, trace uh, Samuel's leadership of the people of Israel as a prophet. And later, then, uh, he is the one who uh, uh, helps uh, uh, a crown or uh, give God's blessing on the king uh, or King Saul and then later King David. Samuel, his uh, history is that his mother was uh, bound to be childless and so she uh, asked God for a child and then received a son and in that prayer she said, I will give my son to you, O God. And so when he was uh, three years old, she kept her promise. Uh, she uh, offered Samuel and took Samuel to the house of the high priest Eli and his family. And uh, he was one of the Levite priests. He was a Nazarite. Uh, means he would take no alcohol. He let his hair uh, grow. And yet he was very dedicated and called to be dedicated to the ways of God. And so our call story today uh, is part of, I think, God's obviously plan. He he blesses Hannah, who has Samuel. She is faithful to uh, respond to her promise. Uh, she offers uh, Samuel to God. And so we're in a, 
a scene, or it's interesting, it begins with the, uh, the phrase uh, that the, the, Lord, uh, the word of the Lord is rare and that there weren't very many visions. In those days, the word of God was rare. <clears throat> now, what we mean by that is uh, this was a period of tribulation for the people of Israel. Uh, Eli, who was the high priest, and his sons, especially his sons, uh, have begun to move people away from God. In fact, as religious leaders, his sons were, as we read in the scripture, cursing God. Uh, they were cheating uh, people with the offerings. Uh, they were not very strong and, and good representatives of God. And in fact, um, God noticed this and was disappointed that Eli wasn't reprimanding his sons or intervening at some place. And so uh, during this t time, again, the word of God was rare. And uh, it's fascinating in the way that the author, or the writer of this um, oral story, uh, says uh, that Eli's was in a weakened state and his eyesight was poor. Now there's a, an imagery with that description of Eli as to say, you know, he was this vibrant, probably faithful follower of God, but as he got older, he was starting to kind of forget about God. And in, case, in that case, because of that, his relationship with God had become rare. He had not seen visions of God. He did not hear from God. And yet he almost, I think, forgot God, which then God responds to by, in this story, calling Samuel. Now, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, this is kind of, again, another way of this uh, story is written. It's kind of like, you know, a joke. You got, like, the three moments, and then you have the punchline. Well, it's kind of the same thing. You know, Eli, or uh, 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 Samuel is laying in the, where the Ark of the Covenant is. And it did say in the Scripture that God's lamp had not gone out. As to say, God was still with the people. It was just rare. And yet he saw something in Samuel, and so he calls to Samuel, who is sleeping on the floor. Uh, Samuel, as it says in the scripture, he hadn't known the Lord yet. He didn't know how to recognize God's voice. So he gets up and he runs in and he says to Eli, here I am, you called me. Uh, no, I didn't call you, go back to bed. Happens a second time, happens, happens a third time. And it's the third time when it says that Eli realized, whoa, it is God that's calling Samuel. And so he says to Samuel, the next time you hear the voice, say, I am here, Lord, speak, your servant is listening. And so God comes again. Can you imagine going back and, uh, and how... Uh, of course, this is all happening in the night. And Samuel is anticipating, well, what is this voice? What is this call? What is this all about? He's about 12 years old at this time. And he hears the call again. And he does what Eli instructs him to do. He says, here I am, Lord. Speak, for your servant is listening. There was a producer who produced the Broadway play, uh, uh, Our Town. And in preparation for bringing that play onto Broadway, there was a lot of small details and stress related to that. And there were a lot of people asking him questions. And he was starting to kind of miss some of the details. And he believed, he thought, it was something wrong with his, with his hearing. And so he went to an audiologist. And the audiologist uh, heard his little story about how busy he was and how he was getting forgetful and he wasn't seeming to catch all the details. And so the audiologist took his uh, watch out, his pocket watch, and he put it by his ear and he said, can you hear it ticking? Yes, I can. And then he got up and he moved a little farther away and said, can you hear it ticking? Yes, I can. He went over by the door pretty far away and said, can you still hear it ticking? And the man said, yes, I, I can hear it ticking. He came back down and he sat down and he said to him, um, sir, I don't think you have a hearing problem. I think you have a listening problem. You just aren't listening 
with your total being. I think that's what happens with us sometimes in our relationship with God. We're much like Samuel. When God's word comes to us, we're thinking it's somebody else or some other uh, situation. And yet, it takes even Eli three times to recognize that God is speaking to Samuel. In essence, uh, Samuel is responding with, I am here, speak for your servant is listening. So what are the ways we listen to God? What are the ways that God speaks to us? Well, I think obviously we were getting a theme of, you know, God often speaks in the places or times when we least expect it. For Samuel, it was in the middle of the night. And oftentimes that is when we are sensitive and silent is the time that Lord speaks. Obviously, prayer is an important vehicle for us because in the midst of the silence and practicing that silence and, uh, and uh, waiting upon God to speak to us, God speaks. God speaks to us in and through a time of prayer. But it's not going to be just a one-time prayer or on Sunday morning or just occasional times we try to incorporate that. That has to be a part of our Everyday awareness. Our everyday time of prayer is, is being aware and present for God to speak. And much like the chess player told us, silence is the best place for that kind of communication. So we seek to incorporate more silence in our lives so that we can hear God speak to us. Many of you know I'm a, I was a, a music major at Dakota Wesleyan, and uh, one of the classes I took an interim class on appreciation of jazz. Now, I'm not like your big uh, jazz lover. However, part of the syllabus, or part of the work for the class, was to listen to uh, jazz tunes, and jazz songs. And our instructor told us that we were supposed to be, through listening to the song, kind of pick out the melody line and which instrument was playing that. Well, you know, the first few times I did that, I was like, well, how do I know what instrument it is? And, you know, you try to follow the, the tune, and, uh, and pretty soon it was like, man, this is going to take a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. And uh, so you keep listening to the song, uh, then you listen to more songs. And it's interesting, by the end of the month, you know, I think I had trained my ear to hear which instrument was playing what, what the melody line was going to what instrument. But it took practice. I mean, I just didn't do that right away. It took practice of, of listening to many songs over a period of time and then eventually kind of getting the hang of how this works. And I think that's kind of a similar illustration of how we open ourselves to hang, saying, here I am, speak, your servant is listening. It's a thing that we have to practice. It's not something that just happens. God waited upon Samuel when he was ready to hear God speak to him. And once he was open, we see in the, in the scripture that Samuel becomes one of the, obviously the leading prophet for God because he opened himself to listening to God speak to him. You know, uh, he goes on, as then God says in the scripture, uh, that he uh, will do a new thing. Now, that's kind of nerve-wracking, isn't it? You know, uh, God says, I will, I'm going to do something to make the ears of the people tingle. Now, when you uh, think of the word tingle, um, tingle means uh, quiver. Or uh, not only tingle, but it, it's not always a positive word. In fact, it means uh, something of a judgment is coming or a transition or a change. In essence, what, uh, what God said in the scripture was Eli and his sons had failed to truly be God's people. And so God was ready to say it's time to move on. And he kept in his promise. He had already kind of told Eli this was happening because of his failure to be God's servant. 
And so now God is moving to Samuel and empowering and being with Samuel because Samuel opened himself up to experiencing God's voice in his life. But what's interesting is it says that God is doing a new thing. One of the things uh, I've always learned throughout the life of the church is the seven last words of the church. Does anybody here know what the seven last words of the church are? You probably have heard me say this before. We have never done it that way before. uh, before. We have never done it that way before. You know, it's that kind of sense that we like to stay with things in order. And yet our God is a God of transitions and changes and seasons. Sometimes God is going to do a new thing, and maybe God is going to do that new thing through us. We may be the servants who listen to God speak to us. God anointed Samuel. God spoke to Samuel, and Samuel listened with his heart. Of course, you notice that (laughs) he uh, had to stay awake because he knew that he was going to have to tell Eli the whole vision of God. In fact, you notice in the scripture, Eli gets up, says, Samuel, what did God say to you? And you better tell me everything, or God's going to punish you. And so, can you imagine how scary that is for a 12-year-old boy to tell his high priest, well, this is what God said. God says, he's leaving you because you didn't obey You notice Eli's response. The Lord will do what God will do. And in essence, God is saying, I am doing a new thing. So in those places in our lives when we're worried about transitions or changes, it might be literally God doing that new thing in our journeys of life and faith. It might be through a troubled time. It might be through turbulence. It might be through a moment of joy. It might be through a time of struggle. And yet God comes to us if we are open and listening to God speak. And if we open and we do listen, God will lead us sometimes, most of the time, to do a new thing. So the question is, does God, as God speaks to us, are we listening? Are we listening to God? Uh, Sue uh, Malcolm is a teacher in a Catholic school in Hawaii, and uh, she has the students of about five, six years old to 12. Uh, She loaded them all on a bus, and they went on a series of field trips one day, and each of the children were given an inexpensive camera with the instruction that throughout the day, they were supposed to take a picture uh, of, of looking for God. You know, when you think you see God, when you see God in whatever we're going to experience today, you take a picture uh, that we're of that incident or that experience or that place and give us a description of how you're seeing God in that. So um, they came back and they went through their pictures and they made a presentation. It was so well received uh, that they turned it into a book called God's Photo Album. And remember, these are 6 through 12-year-olds. <clears throat> now, John took a picture of a lonely path up a hill, and he entitled his picture, A Road of Hope. Jennifer found God on a bus because God led us to where we could find him. She took a picture of the bus. bus is what led them to find God. Brian took a picture of a cemetery, and he said, uh, because this, these people are with God. Janine said she found God in her friend Crystal. She took a picture of her while she was writing down where she saw God. And lastly, Carolyn, she took a picture of a little girl that was sitting on concrete steps with her knees tucked in together, and she was looking to her left, and there was nobody over there. And Carolyn captioned this picture, I see God waiting for someone to talk to. I see God waiting for someone to talk to. Here I am, Lord. Speak, for your servant is listening. Let us pray. (laughs) 
God incorporate in each of us a daily awareness and moments of silence. For in your call to Samuel, you came to him in the, in the middle of the night, in the quiet of the night. Lord, help us to incorporate in our journeys of life, in those moments of silence, of opening ourselves to listening to you. And most often, so Lord, when you speak, it is usually to a new thing, a transition, a change, or something that you're leading us towards. Help us not to be afraid, but help us to heed your call. For just as you called Samuel to lead the people of Israel, so you call us in a variety of settings and places and situations to be your servants. So, O oh God, speak, for your servants are listening. For we ask this in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.